Hi, I'm Keith Ford and I'm here with Steve Ostrom again and we're at Rock Island Auctions bringing some more cool guns from the vault and I see two little small revolvers but what's what's going on with these? They feel oh, a little, little lightweight oh, to super, me. Super, super lightweight. These weigh absolutely nothing and there's a reason for that. These are the Colt and Smith & Wesson versions of the Air Crewman pistol which is a ultra lightweight gun developed for the Air Force in the 1950s. This was going to be part of the survival kit, something the pilots could use for self-defense or what have you. And they're so light because they have, in addition to an aluminum frame, they have an aluminum cylinder. Of course the barrel steel, the hammer and trigger are steel, and the internals are the same as always, but these are about as light as you can get a gun and still have it work. Now that led to problems down the road having an aluminum cylinder. They were originally meant for a special load, a 130 grain bullet I think it was, marching along at uh, mid-range velocity, six, seven hundred feet a second, not much. Low pressure load. But uh, over time these presented problems with cylinders cracking, bulging, breaking, what have you. Not altogether unpredictable, but it happened. So they crushed them up. They destroyed as many of them as they could get their hands on and these surviving examples we're just lucky to have because there are not many left in the world. Um, these could have been presented to a dignitary, they could have been misplaced, they could have been uh, <laughs> I lost a taken couple. for a walk and <laughs> forgotten to brought back, bring back, I don't know. But uh, they're pretty unmistakable. On the back strap you will see it says property of US Air Force and on the barrel, it'll say Air Crewman. Pretty hard to miss. You know when you have one of these, but uh, you're not likely to see one at your local gun show, at least not anytime soon. They're not making any more of them. Otherwise, they're just nice little guns. Mm -hmm. um, this is made on the J-frame, of course, and what's that, the D-frame there, like the, so. the Cobra? Detective Special Cobra. Yeah, about yeah. that size. Yep. In fact, uh, they didn't really have to do much other than put aluminum mm -hmm. in the machinery instead of steel in some cases. And I don't know, back in the 50s, how good the aluminum actually was compared to now. I mean, nowadays, we would just make it out of titanium and yeah. be done with it. You, know, you can buy a Smith & Wesson J-frame with a titanium cylinder now that weighs about this much, but it'll shoot 357 Magnum. We had no issues. Right. But this was the best they could do back in the day. and. Uh, it didn't work out. It really didn't. Sad yeah. story there. All those guns getting chopped up. Yeah. But what happened when, whenever they would shoot them, instead of just putting the rounds that were supposed to go in there, they'd grab whatever 38 and just drop it in, and that's, that's well, you get a problem going on. You had to take whatever the <laughs> yeah. quartermaster gave you. Yeah. <laughs> that's the way it works in the military, doesn't it? Oh, yeah. Boy. But uh, these two examples are really nice shape. Mm -hmm survived well and of course they're not meant to be shot a lot so I guess that's not surprising. Anyway, if you have any comments or questions or if you have one of these guns, leave us a comment below. We'd like to hear from you. In the meantime, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time when we bring you another gun from, from the, the vault. vault.